guys, how's everybody doing? And welcome back to the channel. Um, been a couple of days. I do have a few things done. I did get all the cases cleaned up and painted. I do have it bolted together just to protect the surface of where the gas is going to be. So I need to pull these bolts out. I just put uh, five of the seven in. I left those two out because those two are kind of a pain in the butt where you got to use a wrench uh, all the way in and all the way out on those. So uh, I left those out. Got everything painted up. I put the old pan on there uh, to protect the inside or all the passages and stuff like that. I just use the old pan as masking to do that. Some of the things I want to accomplish tonight. I'd like to get the overdrive taken apart and put back together. I made some different presses to do that. Um, I'm going to use, I don't have an alignment tool to put this back together. So I'm going to go ahead and use the intermediate shaft and this long pipe here um what i you have to have everything lined up to be able to get it to put back to be able to put it back have the uh the overdrive back on so what i'm going to attempt to do is the retainer spring on the other side um i'm going to put this in there i'm going to slide this piece of pvc over it and then compress it down using this as my alignment tool and uh put my snap ring in that is right under this edge here first thing i want to do is i'm going to basically i'm going to try and get some clutches replaced tonight we're going to change the input shaft to the billet shaft um, so we're going to start with the uh the forward gear or the forward clutches and get those done um there's a couple there's an apply piston in here that you gotta change the lip seal on and then we'll move on to the direct drum uh, get those clutches changed this little snap ring has to come out right here uh, and that's spring loaded so you got to take that off and there's some lip seals in there also uh, on an apply piston so there's a couple of different things we need to do um, as we have these two components apart so right now i want to go ahead and get started and get the input shaft changed and uh, get the 47 direct or no the forward clutches changed is what these are all right you get the forward direct clutches out you got a snap ring right here in the forward clutch retainer so you just want to grab a hold of that. Pull the backing plate out. Then we can start taking the forward clutches out. Just like everything else, these clutches are in really, really good condition. This backing plate right here, you want to make sure and put it in the right way. That flat surface is going to go down on top of the Belleville spring retainer. Now we got a wavy snap ring. We're going to get it out of there. Plastic spacer. Your Belleville spring. Then you can take your direct clutch or your forward clutch drum down. And then that leaves you with your factory input shaft. You will make sure and take this apply piston out of here. Then you're gonna have a lip seal on the outside edge and on the inside edge. So I'm gonna go grab my seal kit and get both of those replaced. All right, before I put this back together, I wanna to show you some of the major differences between an upgraded 300M billet shaft and a factory shaft. The main things are, this is a billet one piece forged unit and you can see that's a two piece where there's a spline inside there and then you got your outer drum. Your shaft size, it carries the same diameter all the way through your spline. And this one here, you can see how it steps down and then picks back up for your spline. Still has your standard oiling. This actually has upgraded oiling to help the oil get to your torque converter faster. And there's a lip in here on the factory one. As you can see right here, 
where that piece, because that's a two piece shaft, and then this one here has no lip in there because it's a one piece billet shaft. All right, that's what the main differences of the two shafts were. Uh, before we put everything together, we gotta get our lip seals and change those on this apply piston. All right, laid them down the way they go back in the output or the input shaft. So we'll find the ones that we want or need. But just a little bit of transmission fluid on them. Get them put in place. All right, we'll put the seals in. We'll go ahead and grab the uh, input shaft and put that in there. And grab a little bit of oil and wipe around the input shaft. Set that in place. Grab you something blunt and walk it around to get it started. Everything feels real good in that. Now we can grab our forward drum. Bring it up in place. Get our Belleville spring. Your spacer. And then our wavy snap ring.
Now we can grab our bottom plate, clean it off. And I'm gonna put nice coating of transmission, new transmission fluid on it. that down in there and then we'll start with the friction and the steel alternating back and forth between the friction and the steel One thing you never want to do is put in dry clutches. You always want to soak them in transmission fluid for a little bit before you get started. Go ahead and put in top plate and then finish it up with the snap ring. Now this is all done and ready to go back into transmission. One thing I do want to do is uh, check for clearance in between the snap ring and this top plate and make sure it's within spec. And that spec should be 25 to 36 thousandths. So we're gonna start with 25. And we got that good. And we'll go to 36, just to make sure we're not too far out of spec. And I, just barely, that's 35 thousandths right there. And I can just barely slide that in there. So that's pretty good right there. So this is all done. With the exception, we gotta put some seals on here and uh, ready to go back in the transmission. All right, that took just a little bit longer than I thought it was going to. So I think that's pretty much gonna end it for tonight. I don't want these videos to get too long. Or, or drag out as far as doing all the assembly. So we're gonna do it in a series of different parts of basically part one, part two, part three. It's just gonna be a series long for a 47 RE. Uh, disassembly you saw, and then the reassembly as far as doing the clutches, and then installing everything inside the housing. So, so far tonight we did get the forward drum done and the new input billet input shaft put in this is a garen input shaft i will put a link in the description for this input shaft if you guys are interested in it uh, garen has a bunch of different items that uh, you may want to check out on their website um, the main thing that i will tell you when you're doing this is make sure and put everything back together the right way and when you're doing these lip seals inside your apply piston make sure and take and run a blunt object around that outside edge and on the inside edge, so you have the seal, it doesn't turn itself inside out as you put it down in place. Because because those seals have to be facing down. So, um, and when you have your seal kit, you just go through and pick out the corresponding seal that you need. Match it up and put it in place. We'll have a apply piston inside the direct drum that we're going to have to replace. Um... Also, there is two, there's a lip seal on the outside and a lip seal on the inside. And on this one right here, we have a bushing that we're gonna have to replace also. Um, one thing I am gonna wait on also is I don't have a tool made up yet to be able to compress these nine springs down. There's nine springs, there's three, three, and three uh, to compress these nine springs down to be able to remove this snap ring. And then that's how you're able to take your apply piston out of there. So I need to get, uh, I'm gonna use a piece of four inch PVC. 
all my stuff that I'm making, I'm gonna make out of PVC. I have saw some other people do that, and it worked out well for them, so we're gonna give it a shot. The only thing that concerns me about doing that is doing the overdrive housing. Uh, what I've made is I've got an actual, this is a uh, three inch coupler uh, to put two pieces together, and then I cut just a little bit of, just a little window in it uh, to get the round snap ring out to actually let the pressure off of the 800 pound spring that's inside there. Um, don't really need to, but we'll go ahead and take all that stuff apart. There's a couple thrust washers in there um, and some thrust bearings in there. We'll go ahead and check. Uh, by the looks of everything that come apart, um, everything looks pretty good as far as the clutches. There's no over wear. There's, I mean, it's they actually look really, really good coming apart. So. I'm um, kind of stoked you could just put back together and get in the truck and take it for the first drive. But that's going to be just a little bit. So guys, if you don't mind, hit that like button, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you have not already done so. And we'll see you guys in the next one.